Good morning, grade 7. Hope you are all doing well and being safe. This is Ms. Pamela Tini giving the physics course. Today we are going to continue section 1 in chapter 6, which talks about temperature, thermal energy, and heat. So please open your books on page 178 and follow up with me. In the previous session, we talked about temperature, what does it mean, how do we measure it, and the different temperature scales, and how we can convert between units of different temperature scales. Today we are going to talk about thermal energy. You may be used to thinking about thermal energy as heat, but they are not the same thing. Temperature, thermal energy, and heat are closely related, but they are all different. So what is thermal energy? Thermal energy is the total energy of all particles in an object. So it is not the same as temperature and heat. Thermal energy is the total energy of all particles in an object. Factors that affect thermal energy. Thermal energy depends on three factors, which are 1. The number of particles in the object. 2. Temperature of the object. 3. The arrangement of the object's particles. So these are the three factors that affect thermal energy. The first factor that affects the thermal energy of an object is the number of particles in that object. The more particles an object has at a given temperature, the more thermal energy it has. So as the number of particles increases in an object, its thermal energy increases as well. For example, a 1 liter pot of hot liquid at 75 degrees Celsius has more thermal energy than a 0.2 liter mug of the same liquid at the same temperature. Why? Because the pot contains more liquid particles than the mug, as you can see in the figures in front of you. The pot has more amount of liquid, so a larger number of particles. And as the number of particles increases in an object, its thermal energy increases as well. The second factor that affects the thermal energy of an object is the temperature of the object. The higher the temperature of an object, the more thermal energy the object has. So as the temperature of the object increases, its thermal energy increases as well. For example, if two one liter pots of hot liquid, so they have the same amount or the same number of particles, have different temperatures, the pot with the higher temperature has more thermal energy. In section 3, you will learn about how thermal energies differ for solids, liquids, and gases, which is linked to the third factor that affects the thermal energy of an object. Now we are going to talk about heat. So we covered temperature, we talked about thermal energy, now we are going to talk about heat. The scientific definition of heat is different from its everyday use. In a conversation, you might say that an object contains heat. However, objects contain thermal energy and not heat. What is heat? Heat is thermal energy moving from a warmer object to, to a cooler object. So objects do not contain heat. So although we might say that an object contains heat, scientifically, its scientific definition is that heat is thermal energy moving from a warmer object to a cooler object. For example, when you hold an ice cube in your hand, the ice cube melts because the thermal energy is transferred from your hand to the ice cube. So of course your hand is the warmer object and the ice cube is the colder object and thermal energy moves from the warmer object to the colder object. So as thermal energy moves from your hand to the ice cube, the ice cube melts. Recall that work also involves the transfer of energy. And since work and heat are both energy transfers, they are both measured in the same unit, which is joules. So whenever we have a warmer object and a cooler object, and thermal energy is transferred from the warmer object to the cooler object, then there is a transfer of energy, which means that heat is measured in joules, like work. We also have something called specific heat. When an object is heated, its temperature rises, but the temperature does not rise at the same rate for all objects. The amount of heat required to raise the temperature of an object depends on the object's chemical makeup. So, whenever we heat an object, its temperature rises, but the temperature doesn't rise at the same rate for all objects. This depends on the chemical makeup of the object. So, the amount of energy required to raise the temperature of 1 kilogram of a material by 1 Kelvin is called specific heat. So, this heat is specific to each material. Why? Because the rate at which the temperature rises for each material is different according to its chemical makeup. And the amount of energy required to raise the temperature of a material, of a 1 kilogram of a specific material by 1 Kelvin, is called the specific heat of the material.
Now look at the table in front of you. You can see the specific heat capacity for different materials at atmospheric pressure. For example, first we have water. So in order to raise the temperature of 1 kilogram of water by 1 Kelvin, you need 4,186 joules. But in order to raise the uh, temperature of 1 kilogram of glass, for example, by 1 Kelvin, you only need 837 joules. A material with high specific heat can absorb a great deal of thermal energy without a great change in temperature. For example, water. It can absorb a great deal of thermal energy without a great change in its temperature because it has high specific heat. On the other hand, a material with low specific heat would have a large temperature change after absorbing the same amount of thermal energy, for example, glass. So, if water and glass absorb the same amount of energy, their temperature changes would be different. For water, the temperature will not change a lot. However, for glass, the temperature will change a lot because it has a low specific heat. Now we are going to talk about the change in energy. The energy gained or lost by a material is related to its mass, change in temperature, and specific heat. You can calculate the thermal energy changes with the following formula. So in order to know the changes in thermal energy, which is measured in joules, we can use the formula that we see in front of us. It is equal to mass measured in kilograms times specific heat measured in joules per kilograms dot kelvins times change in temperature, which is measured in kelvins. As an example, please open your books on page 181 and follow up with me. Here, below the equation of change in energy, they ask us how much heat is required to raise the temperature of 5 kilograms of water by 10 kelvins. So they need to know the change in energy to raise the temperature of 5 kilograms of water by 10 kelvins. First, we write the mass, which is equal to 5 kilograms, times the specific heat of water, which we know from, the, uh, from figure 6 on page 181, equal to 4180 joules per kilogram dot kelvin times 10 kelvins and the answer is 29,000 joules uh, 209,000 joules sorry so you need to transfer 209,000 joules to the water to increase its temperature by 10 kelvins as a homework please solve number two parts a b and c and number three parts a and b page 181 your homeworks must be done and submitted to me on tuesday may 12th Thank you, good luck, and stay safe.